Welcome to episode three of the RODI water versus the tap water. In episode one, we grew lettuce. Episode two, we grew jalapeno peppers. And in this episode, we're growing lettuce again. This is the black seeded Simpson variety. You can see they're actually starting to sprout here. These were actually planted just a few days ago. And just like episode two, we're growing under the Mars Hydro TSW 2000. And anything you see in this video that I've used, such as like the nut pots, the rock wool, the pH pen, the nutrients will all be linked in the description as well. Those are affiliate links, and I do receive a tiny commission on that, but it doesn't cost you anything, and it helps me out. So if you haven't seen episode one and two, to get some background on what we're doing here, I highly recommend watching those. They will be linked in the description as well, up here in the cards and towards the end of this video. So just like the first two episodes, we're using the Flora Grow series, and we're using the general purpose mix, which is one teaspoon of each per gallon of water. The only difference in this episode is we're actually also adding CalMag to the RODI water to bring the parts per million or the EC up to about 140, which matches my tap water, and that actually comes out of Lake Erie. So we're going to grow these lettuce heads out, and we're going to come back at the end of this video once they're done growing, or sooner if it is warranted. So we'll see you soon. All right, it's been exactly five weeks since the last segment of this video, and these lettuce heads are pretty much done growing, at least for this experiment anyways. They've consumed almost the entire gallon of water in each one of these containers, pretty much at the same rate. They both weigh pretty much nothing, and there's hardly anything left in them. I did not change the solution out during the entire process. I didn't check the pH. I did not check the TDS. I didn't care about any of that. I just let them grow with whatever was in there until it was all consumed, which it pretty much is now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at the roots and we're going to weigh these heads and see which one did better. Okay, so here is the roots of the plant that was grown in the tap water solution. You can see it looks pretty normal. They're a little brown, that's to be expected. Now let's take a look at the one that was grown in the RODI water solution. Uh, lots of air roots on these, on this one. This bundle here kind of seems maybe slightly more dense, um, not a whole lot. You know, that's probably within a margin of error just because it's a different plant, but um, nothing really significant there. So let's go ahead and weigh these plants. Okay, so here's the plant that was grown in the tap water. I went ahead and just left on the piece of rock wool. I just pulled it out of the net cup. So we're gonna weigh this whole thing here. And we got 183 grams for this head of lettuce. And here's the head of lettuce that was grown in the RODI water solution. And you can see it weighs 192 grams, so slightly heavier, but that's within a margin of error. Uh, no head of lettuce is going to grow identically to another one, or I should say no plant, for that matter, is going to grow identically to another one where the weights are going to be exactly the same. So it's a few grams heavier, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a better uh, option to grow in RODI water. Um, simply because of a couple things which we're going to talk about in a second here. So that pretty much concludes this three-part video series with the RODI versus the tap water. Um, in my case and in my experience, I don't really see any real reason for me to use RODI water in um, any of my hydroponic grows or experiments, simply because my water, my tap water, is pretty soft already as it is. And you know, at only 140 parts per million on average with the water that comes out of the lake, Lake Erie, um, there's not really a whole lot in there to kind of mess up the solution, which we're going to talk about that in a second here, uh, which is why it might be bad for you to use tap water. But for me, this is just what I'm talking about. So mostly my tap water is, is calcium and magnesium. Um, that's really all that's in there. The rest of it, the rest of the TDS that's in there, the dissolved solids is, is minimal. And it's actually stuff that plants want to absorb anyways, is stuff that they need. Now, in some cases, um, in your case, you may not have tap water that's quite as clean as mine. It might come out of a well. Uh, it might be loaded with a lot of iron and sulfur. Um, it depends on where your water source comes from. It depends on what your water is like. Some people have very hard water. They could have four to 500 parts per million and if you add this nutrient solution into that water with already having that much TDS in there, then it's definitely going to not do good because you have too much of something in the solution. You're going to basically, um, to put it in kind of an easy way to understand, you're going to block the pores up on the roots of the plant. I know that's not actually quite what's happening, but you can't have that much fertilizer in a hydroponic solution 
because it's either going to uh, make the plants do poorly or it's going to cause nutrient burn in the plants. It, there's there's a lot of things it can cause. So what I'm saying basically is in your case, it may be a different story, but in my case, um, using RODR water, just there's, there's no reason to do it um, because all it's really missing when I add the uh, this general hydroponics flora series is just the calcium and magnesium from the RODI water. So if I add that in there, it's essentially the exact same thing as my tap water already is, um, which kind of leads me into talking about something else. There's some people that think that, uh, you know, there's all kinds of bad chemicals and stuff in your tap water that's no good for plants, no good for you, stuff like that. Well, maybe in someone's case, that might be true. Uh, in my case, I know what's in my tap water. It's pretty much all the normal things you'd find in water. Um, as, as far as minerals go, that's all plant stuff. Uh, th those are things that plants use. And chlorine, um, chlorine is actually something that plants absorb it naturally in the ground. Now, there's a different form of chlorine that it would be absorbed from the what you'd find in, in the earth. Um, but still, even if you're using tap water and it's chlorinated, which I've done in this video series, the chlorine basically gases off in, in 24 hours anyways. So there's really nothing left. And it's not going to kill the microbes. And in hydroponics, you don't really have to worry too much about microbes anyways. Um, that's more of when you're talking about soil microbes and beneficial fungus and bacteria such as uh, mycorrhizal fungi. There's been plenty of studies done where you're taking chlorinated water, you can pour it through the soil, and it's not going to kill off any bacteria in any significant amount. Um, it basically, it doesn't do anything to the stuff, the microbes in the soil. Um, even if you were to put an excessive amount of chlorine in the soil, the microbes bound ba bounce back within a very short amount of time anyway. So you don't really have to worry too much about chlorine either way. Uh, but as far as what's in tap water, uh, there's really not a whole lot. It's just a couple minerals. But think about the fertilizer that you're actually putting in your hydroponic solution. If you read what is in these, um, or any kind of fertilizer or a chemical fertilizer, I know that chem word chemical is, is puts people off sometimes. We're going to talk about that too in a second. But you got nitrogen, you got phosphates, you got potash, you got magnesium, which is already in groundwater anyways for the most part. You got sulfur. Um, a lot of different metals. So you got calcium, boron, cobalt, copper, uh, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc, um, and that's just a couple of things. But there, you know, there's other stuff too. If you were to put these in a glass of water, would you want to drink it? No, of course not. You'd probably get sick. You might, maybe, you might even die. I don't know if that's true, but I'm not going to try it myself. But you won't find uh, a lot of those things in tap water. Some of those things you might, but other things that you won't and it probably would not be good if you were to try to drink a water glass a glass of water full of that stuff so tap water is pretty clean as it is uh depending on where you get your water from but still what i wanted to talk about also is the um the idea that you have chemical fertilizer versus organic fertilizer so what's really the difference here well all the components get broken down uh, before the plants actually absorb it. So basically, this here, these three different components are already plant ready. They're already plant absorbable, absorbable, adsorbable, that's actually technically the right term. But these are plant ready. So as soon as you put it in there, the plants can take it up. Uh, or if you put it in the ground, the same thing. Organics, organic fertilization, is where you're basically taking something that the microbes in the soil have to break down first before it becomes plant available. And what it's basically doing is breaking it down into the components that's basically what a chemical fertilizer is. It's These are the components that the, plants, the plant can absorb now. Organics just puts another step in that process, and the microbes have to break it down and release exactly what's in here to the plants. So... There's some people who are really put off by using chemical fertilizers. Well, 
I guess if you want to put it in a, in a way that if you're like fertilizing your grass with a chemical fertilizer and you got a dog and you don't want the dog walking in it, licking their paws, like that might be a different story. But as far as you consuming something that you're growing using chemical fertilizer, it doesn't matter. It all breaks down into the exact same components anyways, whether it's chemical or organic. So this video was a little bit longer than I intended it to be, but there was a couple things I had to add to this because we're kind of talking about specific specific reasons why you would or wouldn't want to use RODI or tap water. And as I said, in my case, there really isn't any reason to use RODI water for hydroponics or soil for that matter. But in your case, it might be different. So I hope that was helpful. That's it for this video series. We have another video coming up in a little while. It's going to be a liquid fertilizer with this particular uh, solution versus a um, powdered fertilizer. So that'll be coming up pretty soon. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.